Keeping Kato in an algae reactor such as the Pax Bellum Arid is a great way to control nutrients and increase water clarity in a reef tank. It also balances pH by taking up excess CO2 and increases dissolved oxygen. To take advantage of these benefits, it is very important to keep Kato alive and well. Here are some tips or best practices on how to optimize Kato growth and prevent it from crashing. Number one, provide sufficient flow through the reactor with a strong enough pump. You can record flow by timing how long it takes for the outflow to fill a known volume. Number two, don't have the reactor draw water from a refugium with macroalgae. This will compete with Kato in a reactor. The elevated dissolved oxygen and lower available elements and nutrients will stunt the algae in a algae reactor. Number three, avoid excess pruning. It is best to harvest a third of the Kato once a week or once every two weeks. Number four, when harvesting Kato, rinse what you end up keeping in the reactor with seawater, not fresh water. You can use a five gallon bucket. Removing the biofilm in this manner is necessary since it is a secondary nutrient export. Number five, Kato needs at least eight hours of darkness, so run the reactor's LEDs for no more than 16 hours. Run a reverse daylight cycle to keep the system water pH stable 24 seven. Number six, acclimate Kato to the intense LEDs by slowly ramping up the light cycle over a week. Start with as little as four hours. This is not a hard rule, but most should start with around eight hours of light. Dose potassium iodine, especially during acclimation, to reduce photooxidative stress. Number seven, avoid low nitrate levels. Nitrate is the main nutrient needed for Kato growth, and a nitrate supplement will have to be dosed when using a reactor. Dose as needed to maintain a 100 to 1 ratio of nitrate to phosphate. The minimum ratio is 20 to 1, and the maximum is 200 to 1. So if phosphate reads 0.05 parts per million, set nitrate to 5 parts per million, or at least 1 part per million. Number eight, maintain proper levels of phosphate. As I just stated, phosphate is important too, but Cato needs much less of this element versus nitrate. In some cases, it may be necessary to dose phosphate to maintain the recommended ratio between nitrate and phosphate. Do not let phosphate drop below 0.02 part per million. The ideal range is 0.03 to 0.07 parts per million. Number nine, keep magnesium below 1500 parts per million. High magnesium can interfere with the functions of calcium, a key element for plant growth and production. High magnesium can also impact the uptake of potassium, another important element for Cato growth. Number 10, maintain proper levels of boron and iron. These elements are also important for Cato growth. You can use a supplement to raise iron, and believe it or not, a laundry detergent called borax to elevate boron. I use this stuff myself. Number 11, replace old light sleeves. To maintain the intensity of the LEDs, light sleeves should be replaced one time per year due to aging and scratches. Number 12, do not use GFO while using an algae reactor. GFO will strip out certain trace elements important for Kato growth. Number 13, do not use bio pellets while using an algae reactor. Bio pellets will limit the nitrates needed for Kato growth and possibly invert the nitrate to phosphate ratio. And finally, number 14, dose a B12 supplement. Some anecdotal evidence suggests that B12 is an important vitamin for Kato growth. I recently started dosing Vitachem from Boyd Enterprises, which contains a vitamin B12 supplement. This may be a limiting vitamin for many organisms in the marine environment, not just for certain algae. Bacteria are the main producers of available B12. Check out the video description below to see recommendations for key water parameters. Periodic ICP testing is advised, so make sure these parameters do not fall outside of these boundaries. And there you have it. Just want to give a shout out to Tristan Wilson, owner of Pax Bellum, for helping to compile this list. Many thanks for watching, and please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. And also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button to be alerted to my latest videos. And if you're interested in purchasing a copy of my book, A Reef Bum's Guide to Keeping an SPS Reef Tank, please click on the link in the upper right hand corner. The book includes a whole bunch of tips to help you maintain a beautiful reef tank.